Okay, so let me show you what I made using last year's Red, White, and Blue by Michelle Coleman. And we're going to make this little mini album today. This album, the pages actually measure five and a half by five and a half, but the outside of this measures. Um, a five and three quarters by five and three quarters and the spine is I believe two and a half Yes, two and a half inches So this is gonna be a fun and easy project for you all um, I just kind of decorated this the other day and I really had a lot of fun with it and I love how you can use this for Memorial Day. You can use this for Fourth of July. You can use this as a military album. You could use this as a, you know, backyard barbecue album. It would be a lot of fun. Um, might need to change some of the elements on it, but this one definitely has the barbecue um, feel in it. This one, not so much, just, just so you know. Although there is one right here, good old-fashioned barbecue. So it's a really cute, fun, and easy album to make today. So we will go ahead and get started. Now I pre-made some of the pages already just because of time and um, so that we wouldn't be here all day matting and papering and all that kind of stuff. So um, this is by Becky Fleck and I just really love how it is. I'm proud to be an American Independence Day, 4th of July, celebrate. Then of course it has a Pledge of Allegiance on here. Um, my favorite plaids. Okay, I love the plaids. And the fireworks was really cool. I thought that was really cute. And I love the flag banners and the bunting banners. Those have, oh, and the fireworks. Hello, those are cute too. So anyway, let's go ahead and get on into this. We are going to start off, okay, and I'm just going to show you on one. You're going to need for your base pages, this one is going to be A. This one is going to be eight and a half by five and a half. And you're going to, on the eight and a half inch side, score at five and a half. I already have these directions ready to go. I will upload this onto YouTube tomorrow along with the link to the PDF file, okay? So once you score it on the eight and a half inch side at five and a half inches, you're just gonna turn it and fold and burnish it in and then we're going to put this we're going to put a to the side okay then we're going to have five of these as well this one is going to be six and a half by five and a half see we're always keeping that five and a half and then on your six and a half inch side you're going to score at a half inch and then at six this one is going to be B, so I would mark all of those B, okay? And then you're gonna go to your mountain high side, all right? And then you're gonna fold and burnish, okay? This is where your half inch tape or your glue or whatever you're gonna use is gonna come in handy. Now, there's two ways you can create this page, and I'm gonna show you. So, of course, you wanna have, you, you always wanna have your hinges at the top and the bottom, okay? So this way it can slide on to the hinge system at the end when you're done creating all these pages, okay? Now, you can either do it this way, okay? And for mine, I created three pages like this where this little flap is at the bottom, okay? And that is going to be a pocket page. And then I created two, and actually we're making the second one right now, where you turn it to the left. So this would just be a flat page, okay? So you could put your smaller, um, I don't want to call it like your little snap photos, Polaroid photos right there. They would fit in there perfectly. So I'm going to grab my glue. I'm not going to use tape right now. I will be using it very shortly, but just for this tutorial. Um, I'm not going to use it right here at this, at this section right here. Okay. So again, right. I want to have it like this and I'm going to just put it right up here. Just make sure you don't go past your score line. Okay. So that it will fold right easy, but you know, butt it right up next to it. All right. And let me get rid of some of this excess glue. Okay, 
I tell you what, black shows up all your mistakes. <laughs> shows up all your glue fun. Oh, yay. But at least this dries clear, so it's going to be all right. I'm going to go ahead and add my glue to my other tab. All right. And I'm just going to line it up. Wipe off my excess glue first. And then I'm going to burnish it in, all right? Oops. Okay, make sure this is nice and smooth and flat. Okay. We've got lots of glue goobers today is what I call it. All right, so once you have this together, um, you're going to need... And for some odd reason, they're not right here. How strange is that? So we'll make some. Okay. <clears throat> for your pockets, all right, you're going to get some of your excess paper. And we're going to create a one-inch strip. And this is going to be creating the hinges for your pockets. All right. And then we're going to take that on the one-inch side. And we're going to score right down the middle at a half inch. All right. And this should make about two hinges for each one inch strip here. And then I'm going to grab my cutter. And my pockets are three inches long. Okay. This one I'm not making a pocket, but I have another one that I actually did not um, finish it. Oh, here they are, I attached it right here. But anyway, we'll go ahead and show you. It's gonna be two and seven eighths, okay? So you would need six of these for your three pockets, all right? And let me just go ahead. Another thing I like to do, and I'm gonna tell you in just a minute why, I like to number my pockets um, if I've already decorated them and that way I don't repeat my patterns okay so I know which papers are on which one and they don't you know butt up next to each other I guess I'm weird like that <laughs> I, just, I like mine to not um, you know repeat you know on the same page after page after page I like to do different designs on each page, but that's completely up to you. And then instead of butting this all the way down at the bottom and all the way at the top, I'm just gonna put it right in the center. Okay. So you'll see like a little gap where there's no paper right here at the top and right here at the bottom. Go ahead and burnish that in. Right up there on the edge. We're going to do the same on this side as well. What size is the album? This album is actually the pages are five and a half by five and a half, but the chipboard is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. I'm sorry, for some reason, my computer runs very slow. Um, on the feed so i will try to get to all your answers especially if i don't answer them now i'll get them at the end of the show okay and then i'm just going to add my glue and then i'm going to go ahead and seal this okay now you have two choices you can seal these and then um, not have the paper go underneath and you would actually have extra paper left over to make other things that's completely up to you I, it just depends on what I'm doing. I, I like to actually have it go all the way down if I possibly can. And um, in this kit, you should definitely have, it comes with 12 sheets of 12 by 12 double-sided cardstock. And then of course you get your stickers. So this whole uh, collection, just one of these can make this album. So it's, it's really easy, okay? Now, I want to go ahead and renumber this number five so I don't forget, so I can have these in order, all right? Now, I want to go ahead and finish page number four. I believe that's the only one I'm missing here. That's right, page number four. 
Um, and we're going to use our pattern paper at this point, and I'm going to give you those measurements too, all right? So let me grab that really quick. So I want this one to be a flappy page, so it's not actually going to be a pocket. So for your decorative cardstock, it's going to be um, five and three eighths and five and three eighths. Now, if you want more of a border, then you could go to four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That is completely up to you. And I think, yeah, I'm going to have this one right in here. All right. And I like to hold mine in place. I know it's kind of weird, but I like to hold mine in place and then add glue to each side because I make too many mistakes where I make my paper crooked <laughs> and this allows me to um, make sure that it's not. So I hope that helps for y'all. Some of my little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. It is a little extra time consuming but if I put it on crooked, then that's even more time consuming because then I got to get my, my goo gone stuff or whatever and lift it up. Here we go. Just burnish that in. Okay. Now this is completely up to you. Okay. I like to use another coordinating color cardstock for my journaling paper, but you definitely have enough paper in this collection to um, paper inside and outside on this. So you would need one pattern, and these are gonna be the same measurements, two and seven eighths by five and three eighths, okay? So they're the same. But I'm gonna keep my journaling one on the inside and my decorative one on the outside. Like I said, you know, it's just up to you. See what I'm saying, guys? Gotta watch it. Okay. Here we go. And burnish that in. I will say that I got this blue cardstock um, from a local craft store, and I don't like it. I'm gonna say it starts with an M. I can't really say the name, but it starts with an M, guys. And the problem is, is that anytime glue touches it, it changes to a pink color. So I just wanted to pre-warn you of that. Don't buy this blue color. All right. Oh, and let's do the fireworks. Or, you know, nope, nope. Actually, sorry, guys. Hold on. I apologize. I don't know why my, I'm going to do stripes. I lied. I already have fireworks on one of them. There was a reason why I put the stripe side up, side up. Okay, I'm going to turn this to the side. It's just easier for me. And I'm going to burnish that in. Okay. See, guys, that was super easy, super, super easy. All right, so this one is going to be page number four. And so I'm going to put that right there. Now, I'm going to put these to the side, and we're going to go to making our mats for our side pockets, okay? So this is going to be your little side mat. All right. And you can make these a little bit smaller. These are going to stick out just a smidge, but that's what, you know, it makes it easier to grab it. It's just completely up to you what you want to do. But these are five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then your mats or your decorative paper is going to be five and one eighth by five and one eighth. And I did the same thing where I alternate with pattern paper and journaling paper. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add our glue to these. And then you'll have five um, mats. And then 10 of your pattern paper, okay? And I'm just gonna center that. And I hate to say it, this one I don't trust, so I'm gonna do it my, my old school way. So I'm gonna do it like this. 
because I don't want to accidentally get any glue on the top of this because it bleeds. Okay. I want to burnish that in, turn it, and continue to add my glue. All right, let me stop for a second and see if I can answer any questions. Hi, Jennifer Williams. Hi, is it Twila or Twyla? I love your name. That is so cute. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Janet. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Raven. Hi, Barbara. Brandy. Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. Girl, you made it in. I'm going to try to hurry up because actually Tiffany has a, a live show usually today. So, okay. Why do I have an extra piece? That's so weird. Did I miss? Oh, I did miss something. Durr, why didn't y'all say something? I put this on the back here. I was like, something's not right. Let me do my Pledge of Allegiance here on this side. Oh, wait a second. I want to make sure. I'm doing... Yeah, I am. Okay. Whew, I got scared. Don't want to put that on the wrong way. Okay. Oops. And then again, we're just going to Burnish that in real quick. I always like to wipe off the glue first so it doesn't get all over my phone folder. Saves me from having to clean it constantly. Okay. All right. Then I can just burnish that in. All right. Now I'll put that back in order again. Number four. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. We are doing good time, guys. Let me tell you what. I'm so excited. You know, I'm going to keep it that way just for now. All right. So we have our mats done, our base page is done, and now we can start on our hinge. So let's get that done and out of the way. You're going to need a sheet of um, coordinating color cardstock that's going to be 10 inches by five and three eighths okay and then we're going to hold on i've got my let me scroll down a little bit answer any questions in case there are any yes okay okay good i have plenty of time <laughs> all right so my hinge is you're going to start off at one inch one and three eighths and then one and seven eighths, two and three eighths, two and three quarters, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and one eighth, four and five eighths, five and one eighth, five and a half, six, six and a half, six and seven eighths, Seven and three eighths, um, seven and seven eighths, and then my last one is going to be eight and a quarter. Don't worry, I have all of these on your cutting guide, okay? Now I'm going to flip this over because I always fold on the mountain high. So let me explain something real quick before I do that. I always like to use a piece of chalk, and everywhere it's a half inch, so it's a half inch here and a half inch here. That's going to be my actual page. So each one of those I marked one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. That way I know, and it's very easy for me to grab my tape because I always use tape and glue. Okay. So here basically I would skip my one inch and then I'm going to skip my three eighth inch, um, sc my score line. Okay. Or three eighth inch space, however you want to say it. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and where all the half inches are, I'm going to put my score tape. And since I use a combination of score tape and glue, um, I don't fully um, cover the whole piece. But if you used a one inch score tape or 
you know, half inch, that'd be perfect. Just up to you. Mine is quarter inch. Oops, I didn't go all the way to the end. Make sure you cover your whole entire piece of paper, that's for sure. And then you'll just cut off your excess at the end. Okay. And my last one. Okay. Move that back in its place and I won't lose it. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just gonna trim off my excess, okay? So I don't have to mess with it. I know a lot of people will like fold it back onto the paper. I just get it out of my way. Makes it easier on my life. Okay. So now I'm going to flip it back over to my one inch side and I'm going to start peeling these off one at a time. Okay. Or in my case, two really. But I always do one hinge at a time. Add a little bit of glue. Fold on my score line, and I always like to make sure each time I do this that it's lined up straight, okay? Because otherwise, and I've had this happen, and you all saw it live before, um, it will go wonky and crooked. Just saying. Then you'll have crooked pages. Okay, and then we're going to work on hinge number two. And I'm gonna pull it forward, make sure it's lined up, burnish it in, and then again, fold it back right on my score line. And I just continue on until I'm to my very end. Again, line that up. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Burnish it in really good and fold back. And we've got one more hinge after this. Okay. Still again, make sure it's lined up. Wipe off any excess glue. Now you see if I had that blue paper and I was using the blue paper to make this hinge, it would be all pink, I'm telling you, from that glue that comes out. So, and we are going to work on our last one. Oops, I almost did it wrong. Again, line that up. And burnish it in. Okay. Now you don't have to do this, okay? But I really like to work my hinges, okay? So I'm just gonna push them down, turn it around, and then push them back. And I'm gonna do that a couple of times. That way uh, my pages turn easier, okay? And just keep on doing that, okay? All right, so now I have these two little flappy doodly do's, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and fold them. I'm gonna turn my little thing over, fold them over, all right, and burnish it in. And see, this already can turn flat for you. It's actually pretty nice. Let's see if we can get it. There we go, okay? Now, I'm gonna start off on the bigger side and you can use a combination of tape and glue it probably actually is better to use tape and glue but that way there's no lifting because you definitely don't want that um, just burnish it in okay 
really well and then continue on with the other side just make sure you have enough glue don't worry about using too much you can always clean it up um, it's not that bad you'd want to make sure you use enough so that it actually stays together <laughs> all right now we have our hinge guys so easy 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 peasy all right now I'm gonna put this aside and we're gonna start working on making the cover for the album itself okay um, let me move this out of the way real quick. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna grab my two inch tape. And I do mention the size of tapes that you would possibly need for this if you're not using glue, okay? This is two inch tape. I love using it to make my covers, all right? Let me kind of move this. Well, I won't move it out of the way just yet. Hold on. You're going to need your paper. Your first piece is going to be 11 inches by seven and three quarters. On the seven and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score it one inch and six and three quarters. You don't have to do this, but you'll see why I do it in just a second, okay? Um, and then you're gonna turn it back over to the 11 inch side and on one side of it, your left hand side you're going to make a score at one inch okay then you're going to flip it over and i used a piece of chalk and my graph ruler and i measured i always keep it lined up straight so i don't have any crooked lines but um i would just line it up here and measure out a half inch and then either you, or you could just use your half inch score tape. I just don't have any half inch score tape, so I went ahead and used my quarter inch, okay? So this way I know when I'm line, um, putting these two pieces of paper together that um, it lines up straight, okay? Now, your second piece of paper that you're going to put on top of this one is going to be six inches by seven and three quarters. On your seven and three quarter inch side, again, you're gonna score it one inch and six and three quarters, okay? Now, I'm gonna grab my first piece. Actually, I'm gonna get this out of the way now. Whoops. I need my bone folder. Okay. I'm gonna peel this off. And honestly, by me adding these score lines, it helps me keep everything lined up straight. But of course, you can use the lines on your mat as well, you know? Um, that always helps out. And I really prefer doing that all the time, okay? And then I can just line it up. Oops. See, my hands always slip. I don't know what that is. Is it a sign of old age, carpal tunnel? I don't know. All right, then we're gonna burnish that in really well. Okay, and you don't have to do this, but I always like to do this myself. I like to use a little strip of the glue just to close my seam here, keep it sealed so it doesn't kind of poke open ever. And I just run my finger along here. And since this glue dries clear, I don't have to worry about it. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side as well. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I was already kind of messing with this before. So um, I folded on my score lines earlier today. For your chipboard, let me move this out of the way really fast. Hold on. Your chipboard, you're going to need two pieces at five and three quarters by five and three quarters, and then one at two and a half by five and three quarters. Really super easy, guys. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my tape on here. I'm going to start off at the bottom. And I'm going to try to get as close to the edge as possible. I don't want to go over the edge because then I'm going to have to push it all over or cut it off. And that gets messy. So I'm just going to continue on. And continue on. I really need to get closer to that edge, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm going to peel this one back for now. I'm going to flip it around, it's just easier for me. Sounds like my son ran into something in the kitchen, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that big bang and something fall, but that was him. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my little paper trim ruler, and I love using this little baby. Um, and I'm having a brain fart all of a sudden. Let me hold on. Let me grab my little piece here that I took off because I'm going to flip this over real quick. All right. Now, it's just easier for me to see my, my corners. And I'm going to use, you know, we're not even going to use this today. I'm going to try to show you all an easier way. Let me grab my little chalk here. You can see your little score lines. And what I'm going to do is just right after this little score line right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut at an angle. I'm leaving just a smidge of um, that corner, okay? Well, this one I might have to do. Nah. Okay. All right, there we go. Made it easy peasy today, right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's flip it back over and I'm going to go back to where my score line is because that's where I'm going to start. Let me peel these back. All right, I'm going to find my score line again, and I'm just going to start placing these down. Okay, and make sure you do it as straight as possible. And yes, your hands are going to stick. It's just part of the deal, guys. Burnish it in. Then we're going to start on our spine. And I always use this. This is about an eighth of an inch in between. Okay. And burnish it in. And then move on to my next one. That one looks a little smidge crooked, but it'll be okay. That's not that far off, guys. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start turning it on the score lines. And I'm going to push really hard with my fingers and my bone folder at the same time. Pushing it all up here. Okay, and burnishing at the same time here. 
so that it's nice and sealed, okay? I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing on this side as well. Okay. You can go ahead and move, remove some of this mess right here. So I don't have too much bulk. I think I already pressed down a little bit too hard there, but that's all right. No. <laughs> Sorry, that was my son. He's like, did you finish your live show yet? You know he wants to play his video games, guys. You know this, but I told him, no, you cannot. Okay, I'll just have to use some glue right there. I kind of pushed it down a little too hard. That's okay. Okay. Now, I do want to make sure there's not too much sticking out over here. I'm going to trim it just a smidge more. And this one just a smidge more. Oops. Okay. Now, I always like to push in the sides of my corners right here. Because I'm just going to fold over right on the top of those. Okay. Push it in. And see, I'm going to have to use a little bit of glue here because, as you see, I missed my edge here. All right. Wipe off my excess glue and burnish it in really hard. Okay. Smooth out your little corners right here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Like I push it so hard, I literally move my desk. <laughs> okay. Same thing. Burnish that in. Wipe away the excess glue. Okay, sorry. Okay, so now here's the fun part, guys. Right here, I want you to kind of gently start working these right here where your score line is or this little space right here. Just gently push them in, not too hard. Not yet anyway, okay? This is just so you can kind of see where you're going to need to fold, all right? Because we're going to cover this up with paper. And let me measure what we're going to need. Five and three quarters, so it's going to be five and five eighths by... And say 14 and 3 eighths. Okay. Let's see. Do we want to use? Let's see if I have two of the same pattern left over here. Ooh, should we do fireworks? Oh, that is my first page though. All right, let's do fireworks. What the heck? Why not? I love fireworks. Here we go. I'm going to get out my cutting board here. And I'm going to cut out five and three quarters. No, no, no. Five and five eighths. There we go. So just after the five and a half. All right. We're going to need two of these because this is only 12 inches. All right. And I'm going to say we're going to need about two inches. 
So that would be 14. Did I say 14 right now? Hold on, guys. I'm delirious. I did say 14 and a half. No, it's almost, yeah, 14 and a half. So let's just do three right now. All right. That was one piece I forgot to think about. I don't know why. All right. So I'm going to put these two together. I'm going to grab my tape. And again, I'm going to do that same half inch. And I am going a little bit over because I'm going to cut it off. I just want to make sure that there's tape along this whole thing. Okay. And then I'm going to get out my glue. And y'all know me, I always use glue and tape. I like to make sure this is lined up straight. Here we go. All right, burnish it in. And then of course I'm gonna add my little strip of glue. Oops. And flip it over and do the same thing. Okay. Now I can line this up here and see where I need to trim it. I'm going to grab my pencil. So basically a quarter of an inch. I'm telling you guys, it's better to go over than to go under because then you'll mess up your whole piece. That's my best secret advice I can give you. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to double check before I put my cutting board up. It's perfect. Okay. Now we're going to move this out of the way again so I can get out my two inch tape. Okay. I tell you what, guys, when I found this tape, it was like a lifesaver. And I love using the big rolls. When you first start using them, they're a little bit clunky and kind of a pain in the butt. But when you realize how much time you save, you will eventually fall in love with this roll. Okay. <laughs> It's not love at first sight. I'll definitely say that. Okay. I'm going to move that off so I can go ahead and get my bottom strip all the way on there. Okay. All right. I'm going to peel these off and I know this is going to be kind of yuck. I'm going to get glue on my fingers, but I want to make sure the little edges that I miss really get glued down. Okay. I'm going to grab this back out and I want my fireworks going upside up. And I start off with my bottom here and gently, gently, gently lie it down. Oh my gosh, guys, this is probably the best show I've ever done. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't know. I really don't know, but I haven't had too many um, mistakes here yet. All right, here we go. Burnish it all in. And you definitely, definitely, definitely want to smooth this out really, really well so that it doesn't bubble up. Once you start closing on your hinges, okay? 
So I'm gently going to start doing that. While I'm doing it, I'm going to take the edge of my bone folder just aside and gently, gently, gently push it in. Okay, and move it up at the same time. And if it starts bubbling up, push it back out, lay it back down, and keep going until you have all your little bumps smoothed out. Okay, I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to do the same thing on this side because I like to use my left hand when I'm doing this. Again. Yeah. Thought I saw something bumping up. No, maybe I'm crazy. And if you have really big air bubbles, I don't this time, but I have had it where I've had a couple air bubbles. Take the little tip of the glue, stick it in there, add some glue, and then just, you know, massage it out. That's the best thing I can help you with. All right, so now we have this here. What I like to do is bend it all the way. I sure do. I trust my paper, guys. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add our decorative paper um, on the front, and I decided to use the plaid. I call it argyle. Maybe, I don't know. Looks like argyle. Well, hold on, guys. We could change our mind. Maybe... So let me show you the little decoration I made here and y'all tell me what you think, okay? So we have, see that mat? It's too matchy-matchy, guys. Let's do, I think this works better. Oh, and if you're going to use any ribbons or whatever, you can just put it underneath here, okay, before you add your paper. But I'm not going to use any ribbons. So, yeah, I think I'm going to keep it with the plaid. I would have used the hearts if I had uh, not messed up and used hearts there on my scalloped piece. And all I did was use a 12 inch um, in length piece of the um, stars and stripes paper. And then I used quarter inch score lines all along until the end, okay? And then I just used glue gun in the middle. That's it. Easy peasy, guys. All right. So now I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to have this for the back side. Y'all know what I should have done. You know, I should have actually put this down and done it the old fashioned way, but I didn't. Okay, burnish that in really, really well because I don't want any lifting. Okay, and I'm going to put this piece, and I'm going to give you that measurement in just a second. This is going to be four and a half inches by five and three eighths. I don't know. It should be five and five eighths. And I'm going to put this in the center here. All right. So I'm going to add my tape to the back. I can figure out where I started here. Oops, I went over. And I'm just going to fill this in so I don't waste any of my one inch tape. Okay, I'm going to burnish this in really well. And then anywhere I went over, I'm going to cut that, the excess off. Okay.
Oh, I'm grabbing a wipey and wiping it off my scissors. Okay. Sorry about that. It's like stick it to my hands and everything. This tape is really good. Okay. Now again, first I want to make sure where I'm going to line this up at. And I basically am doing an inch here and an inch here from this score line. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So... And I am going to add glue on the top of this. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I may need to move it very quickly. This will give me some leeway before it sticks down 100%. And then burnish it in. Okay. See, I'm starting off by burnishing in on this side really well. And I haven't exactly pushed it down yet where this other hinge is. I'm just going to keep working it. Keep working it. Okay. Now I've got it. Now I can burnish it in really well, along the whole entire back here. And now we have our decorative paper on the back here. Okay, so we turn it back upside up. And now I want to go ahead and apply my hinge here. And I'm just going to leave about a quarter of an inch um, at the bottom and at the top. I'm going to go ahead and add some tape to this. Whoa. And I'm going to burnish that in really well. Let me know if y'all can still see this because on my screen it stuck. Oh, there it goes. I think we're all right. We made it. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Again, I'm going to do the same thing with the glue, guys, because you know I don't trust myself. <laughs> All right. And the best way to do this is to stand up so you can actually see what you're doing and center it. And that looks pretty darn good. And then start burnishing it in and between the pages really well. And last but not least, you're going to start adding on your pages. Okay, sorry, I'm going to cheer up. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to use the quarter inch score tape. What I want you to do is if you push your page, hopefully my video will show this. All right, but. I don't want you to push your page all the way down to the spine, okay? I want you to leave about a eighth of an inch from the page to the bottom of the spine, okay? And the best way to measure that is to basically start with your tape. Okay, and I'm just gonna do this on each page as my little measurement. Because if you push it down all the way to the spine, sometimes it prevents the pages from turning really well if it's too close. Okay. 
you'll hear like a scraping noise or uh, your paper will get crunched. You know, I don't know how else to describe it, but that'd be the best way to say it. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to turn it back around. Again, leave that eighth of an inch. And just keep going. We're almost done. And I went over. Yikes, I hate that. Sorry, I don't want to forget, so I'm going to cut that off now, okay? And just keep going. One more, we're ready. Okay. And the way I like to do is I always like to, like I said, I number my pages and I keep them in front of me. That way I don't mess up. In fact, I'm even going to keep the number on here for the time being until I have them all on. Because, you know, I can't remember. I make so many albums a week that I can't keep up with what goes to what. So I had to start labeling everything. And then I found out that it was easier to teach with it all labeled. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my hand in the middle of where my little pocket is. And I'm just going to slide it on here up until where the tape ends. So I can see that I still have my little eighth inch gap, I guess is what you want to call it. Wipe off any excess glue or your pages will stick together. And I always add glue to help it slide on easier. Um, that's completely up to you. And I'm just going to keep adding my pages on. And just keep burnishing it in. Oopsie. Icky, icky glue. All right. Oops. And besides, I especially want to get glue on the edges where I didn't use tape. So I definitely um, really like using both. But if you're a tape person, I totally understand. Okay, slide that on there. There we go. Burnish that in. And then burnish it in on this side as well. We're almost there, guys. Hasn't been too bad. It's only been about over an hour. About seven minutes over. Not too shabby. 
And we're almost done. Now the rest is just decorating. Okay. Last one. And now I can actually move that off. Okay, burnish that in. Oops, yep. Just gotta love that excess glue, let me tell you. Okay, guys. And if you want to, you can actually put a quarter inch um, by, I think we said this was five and three eighths. So it would be a quarter inch by a quarter inch, actually. Quarter inch. And then you'd keep it at, uh, not a quarter inch, five and a quarter. Okay. So a quarter inch by five and a quarter. That's just up to you. You know, you don't have to put any paper in between there if you don't want to. So now we've almost got this little baby done. Now here's my favorite part is decorating. Okay, let me move all these out of the way. And I'm not really sure, but these stickers are stinking adorable. I'm almost like, should I just do the dog on the front and not this? Because that dog is cute. I'm going to pop this up a little bit. Let's see if I can sneak the dog in here. Okay, let's see if I can get away with it. I think I can. Aren't these flip-flops the cutest? Just going to put this right there. Just, if you can hear my son singing, guys, I'm so sorry. Just ignore it. Okay. He's in choir, and so he just sings all the time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we can totally put him on here. I love it. This is too cute. He's like a little golden retriever. And what should we say? Oh, glory. Will that fit on there? Let me see, or should I do the darker land of the free? I think we'll do land of the free. Super cute. Oh my gosh, guys. I just love how this is turning out. I, I was like, okay, either this is going to be really stinking cute or I don't know. But I think I'm going to do a frame here. And for some odd reason, I did do my cut apart. And I love how we have USA. Guys, next year they better make the bandana paper. That is too cute. And we have Made in the USA, Let Freedom Ring, Let's Grill. So cute. I love that little pinwheel. You could put a little pinwheel on the front of this album, too, and that would be adorable. Uh, I'm not a great pinwheel maker, so I'm not doing that. But, and we'll just keep on adding some stickers in here. Let's see, should we do Plus the USA? Or let freedom ring. I'm thinking, oh, no, no, no. I got a better idea, guys. Maybe I should do USA. It just blends in too much. That's my only problem. Okay. We're going to have to do 
Mm, bless the USA instead. So I'm going to put this, oh my goodness, I'm making a mess here. Let's see, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell in my center. I apologize for not showing you this, but <laughs> I can see my center better this way. Got some little fibers there. Bless the USA. I think we'll do like our little, maybe the firework? Firecracker. That's cute. And I think I'll do USA here. Uh, you can see that a little bit better on this page. Oops, let me get that little center out there. Super cute, guys. I think I'm going to do a grand old flag. I'm going to put this one. Let me put it up here at the top. Oh my goodness. These are my favorite kind of popsicles in the whole world. I am not lying. Okay. So cute. So guys, the possibilities of this album are endless, especially if you have a uh, military family. I know Tiffany does. Her son is going into the Air Force. Is that right, Tiffany? I don't know if she's still on here, but so proud of him. Let's see here. Do another little fireworks. So let's do this big one. Let's see if this one will fit on here. Or we could do the, oh, we'll do the grill. I changed my mind. I'm gonna do a little bit over here. There we go. Guys, I want to thank you so much for joining in with me on a Sunday. Um, but we will definitely be coming back in two weeks. And I know last week I said I was going to do the Halloween. I lied. I apologize. But I am working on it already. So that is going to be another mini album. So I can't wait to see you all. And I think I'll be back in about a week and a half. So I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead of you. Tomorrow's Monday, boo, but you know, hey, we all got to work. So um, I will see you all next time. And again, thank you guys so much for joining in. I so appreciate it. Bye, guys.